Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Game Cola Podcast. This is podcast number 55. Here with me today are Nathaniel Hoover, Paul Franz, and Christian Porter, and Michael Ridgeway. Everyone, introduce yourselves. Shiggity shiggity schwa. It's Nathaniel Hoover, who's feeling kind of sick, and even if he is feeling kind of sick, he does the Game Cola D&D cast and Flash Flood and talks about himself in the third person on occasion. Hello, I'm Paul Franzen. Uh, I'm Game Cola's editor-in-chief, and I have a bucket of raisins. Hi, I'm Christian Porter, and I do the stuff. And uh, I'm Mike Ridgway. I do, uh... Jeez, what do I do anymore, Paul, besides just make fun of you? Uh, you, you you participate in the D&D podcast. Yeah, that's, that's true. I, uh, yeah. I I continually try to derail the D&D podcast, and I'm here with the Gin and Tommy. So there you go. <laughs> Wait, is there actually someone on the Game Cola staff who drinks alcohol? <laughs> Trust me, I probably drink enough for all of you. So. <laughs> that, that's not true. That, I, I'm not that bad of an alcoholic. There's like eight people. So, two people. Two people. Yes. No, actually, uh, I had some friends over, and I've had a few beers sitting in my refrigerator for about six months from when uh, some of the Scooter Club people were over. And I had a couple friends over like a week or two ago. And they were comparing the soda that I made to beer. They were like, oh, this smells like beer. It tastes good, but it smells like beer. And I'm like, it doesn't smell like beer at all. Here, look, I have a beer in the fridge. Let's open it. And we spent about 15 minutes going, what is a can opener? Is this is this a can opener? How do I, how do I use this? Oh, God. How do, Jenny, how old were you? 26. <laughs> how the hell do you not know this yet? Did you go to college? Uh, yes. Oh my god. That's what you're supposed to learn these things. What kind of beer was it? Uh, Newcastle? Well, Newcastle is a different type of beer. It's a brown nail. It's, uh, it's slightly, slightly, uh, richer. We didn't drink uh, it. Now, they might have been talking about your lining kugel, uh, which, it, it's Skittle Brow. It tastes like if someone put Skittles in beer. So maybe Wait. it's very sweet. Does does beer come in cans that you need some sort of external device to to access the? Well, no, it was, he, it was he, in a bottle. I, I assume it was in a bottle. Sorry. He's he talking okay. about a bottle. You need a bottle opener to open. Yeah, I was like, is is this a bottle? Because I, I would imagine that would be that would be difficult for someone who has been been drinking the beer at that point. No, I. No, I, I don't think they they actually some hipsters very well might make beer cans that you need, like, you know, a little tool to open because hipsters are that way. But, no, I, I, I'm fairly certain they were just talking... You're talking about a bottle opener, right, Jenny? Yeah, but, like, I don't own an actual bottle opener, so, like, I was looking at this can opener that I have, and I was like, can you can you open a bottle with this? Like, I think... I guarantee you, you, o- you own a bottle opener <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> they they are almost always attached to the end of things that you would not think they are attached to, like your mouth. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I I mean uh, that's that's what my braces were back when I was in uh, seventh grade. I would just you know you pop a bottle in there. Uh, I did not drink until I was twenty one or actually twenty. So, yes. if mom and dad are listening, <laughs> you know what? I have a very funny story about that. Um, I don't want to derail the podcast, but let's. I will just say that the first time I got hungover, I thought I was dying. Had a friend take me to the hospital, uh, at which point they told me I was just hungover. Um, when I got back, I called my parents to tell them that I had just gone to the hospital because I thought I was dying when really I was just hungover. And my, my dear sweet mother goes, Michael, Michael, Michael. You never mix alcohols because I have mixed up. <laughs> wow. So yes. So so did you die? No. Uh, I did, but I got that. <laughs> okay. I think I think I can actually turn this around to video games. Can you? Really? I can. I can. Uh, we could talk Wait. briefly about the use of alcohol in video games. Yeah, there was that part in Harvest Moon, uh, and. What did you drink in Chrono Trigger when there was that drinking game? Uh, it was like poi or stew. I think it was pork stew. Was it? Well, like I, yeah. I know. Okay, in I mean, in the American version, it was pork stew. Maybe in the Japanese version, okay. it was something. Well, that's the thing. Is like I remember uh, in Harvest Moon, like there was what is obviously the bar, 
and you go there and you drink this big mug and then you sort of like wobble around for a little bit but i think they called it juice or something yeah but like you know it's kind of clear what it was intended to be <laughs> oh yeah i mean hell yeah i can think of any number of examples i mean uh soda pop in and <laughs> punch out was originally vodka drunkinski um <laughs> alcohol and racist against russia <laughs> <laughs> well, it was the 80s. Yes. So <laughs> I love that he was bright red, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you ever played the um, the Wii remake of Punch-Out, uh, if you got through the, like, if, when you became the champion, you would go into champion defense mode, and you would have to fight everyone again, and they'd be tougher. Apparently, they engineered, you know, atomic quote-unquote, soda for Vodka Drunginski, or Soda Popinski. And he would, like, glow green for a little while and just go, like, freaking Hulk on you. <laughs> um, should we should we pull up a topic to discuss? Well, I, 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 have something I, uh, I have an interesting story I could tell. I know I've been talking a lot, but I did something interesting the other day. Interesting story? That's a, what? Well, again, I've been talking a lot, but um, I went to the big, huge games auction the other day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is that the actual name of it, the Big Huge Games Auction? Well, technically, I think it's the 38 Studios Auction, but um, there was, a uh, back in May, 38 Studios imploded. Yep. Um, the people who did uh, uh, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, uh, a decent game, and I knew a lot of people work, that worked at that studio. Uh, the studio here in Maryland is called Big Huge Games. They were bought by 38 Studios to develop a game based on their... IP that 38 Studios wanted to turn into an MMO. But due to mismanagement and lower than expected sales for, uh, for Amalur, they, they went bankrupt. They, they defaulted on some of their loans to, uh, they made, they had from Rhode Island, uh, 38 Studios. And so they went under. See, I, I thought you were saying that it was a games auction that was big and huge, not actually that it was an auction for big, huge games. No, no, it, it was it was an auction for the studio formerly known as Big Huge. <laughs> okay, okay, continue. But I went I went there yesterday. Um, a buddy of mine, uh, and some people out there may have maybe I had talked about this. I'm not sure. Uh, I helped in the game room at a Magfest local gaming convention. Yes. And I do. Uh, I've been working a lot this year on procurement. But, updating our uh, inventory, getting some newer systems in there, et cetera, et cetera. It seemed like a really good chance to uh, pick up some new stuff. Yeah, auctions for video game and, or like, tech company equipment are kind of crazy. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah, a decent crowd showed up. Um, probably about 100 people, I think. Uh, a lot of actually former employees <laughs> did, uh, showed up because I guess they, they wanted to grab something. Yeah. I uh, I was a little worried going in because we had a bunch of uh, on they they had online bidding. I thought, oh man, these are the people that's going to have Google at their fingers, fingertips. They're going to be able like to get the good bids in super early and you know totally you know snipe these deals from un out under me. They were able to snipe deals from out from under me, but it was because they paid way too much. Really? For example, like a uh, like a thirty two inch. LCD TV. Yeah. You can get those for about two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars new during yeah. the sale. Yeah. They they're not they're not so much they're not the hot thing. Online people would pay two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars for them used. Hmm. Uh and that and, and and then add on to that an additional premium you have to pay for, to the auctioneers and then shipping in hand. Yeah. Like I'm I'm watching these people just bid up these items and I'm just like, wow. <laughs> We're pretty dull. Yeah, but we I did manage to actually grab quite a few like consoles that apparently we were the only ones that really wanted you know consoles, mm. which is great because I need them. Mm. Um, and also really great uh, that um, any any technophiles out there might know this, but uh, able to grab some of the old school PS3s, which are I have one of them. I I bought my PS3 when they were starting to phase out backwards compatibility. So I bought up the PS3s they had that have the backwards compatibility all the way back to the PS1, hmm. which is a cool feature. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, you had about 100 people in there. 
Like, it's, it was very much akin to, you know, looting a corpse in a video game. Just, you know, kind of going around going like, ooh, I want that. Oh, I want that. Ooh, I want that. And, you know, just picking over the remains of this game company that I actually had <laughs> bought to uh, a few times for employment. I'm kind of glad, you know, it fell through because I found a job that I'm still at and quite enjoy and that pays well and is stable. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's it was an very interesting experience to kind of see sort of the the aftermath of what happens when you know games and game companies fail. Um, a lot of people there looking for deals. I was one of them. Uh, Pay too much. I think I got a whole like like twenty of their PCs for four hundred bucks, which is great until you realize they don't have a warranty or uh, yeah. parts or anything. Um, and Got to see people there who were, you know, who worked there who loved it, and you know, they're, they're trying to get up a little something. Uh, yeah, interesting experience. Hmm. Actually, uh, vaguely on that topic, uh, game development, game companies, and that kind of thing. Uh, I recently watched the movie Indie Game the Movie. Has anyone seen that? Heard of it's it. in my instant queue. <laughs> Negatory. No. Oh. Uh, it was a documentary. It talks about or like introduces the developers of Raid, Fez, and Super Meat Boy, and kind of goes over, like, what they did, how they got into it, uh, how their game went, and is kind of, like, there at the times uh, when Super Meat Boy was released, and, like, Fez, the legal troubles that they had with their partnership and that kind of thing. Uh, I find it really interesting, and, like, being that I am somewhat, uh, you know, dipping my feet into indie game development myself, it was like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I connect with a lot of what's being said, but sad that you guys have not seen the movie. Fez is a game that I've heard a lot of good things about, and I've been trying to work my way back to some, I don't know how long the game is, but I presume it's got to be shorter than Morrowind, which I just finished, <laughs> but I am trying to work my way back into games that I can beat in an evening, or in a week, or a couple of days, instead of almost a year. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I guess uh, what sort of caught my attention about it particularly, is the game starts out uh, with the developers of Super Meat Boy uh, basically, you know, waking up and going, oh, oh, today is, you know, the release day. I gotta go jump on uh, Xbox and see where my game is, because we were supposed to have this big spot. Where is it? Why is it not here? This is our big day. Microsoft, what are you doing to us? Which is also, very recently uh, in Xbox Live <laughs> Indie Games, they, uh, Paul, have they ever actually solved that prepaid code problem? Nope. Uh, it's been uh, over a at month. least a month. Yeah. Over a month, yeah. Um, the Xbox Live Indie Games channel right now, developers on there are uh, not able to access in any form free codes for the games. And the reason you kind of need those codes is no one's going to review your game if you don't give them a free review code, yeah. uh, which has been my experience with Life in the Dorms, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, game came out bas basically the same time uh, this outage started. Um, we have not seen a single review yet. I even I, uh, I I told people, look, I will I will PayPal you the dollar that my game costs. If that's what it'll take. And they were like, oh no 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 no, please, it's only a dollar. That's fine. We'll just buy it and review it. It's cool. It hasn't happened yet. So a little bitter at Microsoft at the moment. I'll be honest. <laughs> and it puts them in a bad situation because they don't. They've probably been burned so many times by those indie games. They don't want to waste the dollar, but they don't want to have you send them the dollar and feel like a jerk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so kind of, kind of a lose lose. Like I, I've been trying to find a, a great workaround too. Like I was thinking, maybe if you can gift games, like you can do it on Steam. I'll just buy. P I'll, I'll spend however you know. I'll spend the ten dollars to send ten copies of my games out. Nope, can't <laughs> do that. <laughs> Paul, Paul, send me ten dollars. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Will you review my game ten times if I do that? Well, could someone yeah. else buy the game and then gift it to somebody? Um, you, I mean, there's no gifting functionality in an Xbox Live oh, whatsoever. No? Oh. No. Well, no. Like, that's uh, what I was... Oh, sorry, what? For some reason, I thought you could gift uh, Microsoft points. Uh, I mean, you, I could buy gift cards for people. That's true, yeah, I think that's what I was thinking but about. But the, the, uh, the lowest increment is $5, so I'd have to spend $5 to so people could buy a $1 game with it. Actually, uh, I could use my Bing, Paul, my Bing points. Paul, give me $5. <laughs> I could use... I'm not giving you any money, Michael Ridgeway. Here, hold on. Crap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to my Bing rewards. Uh, I have... Actually, okay, I spent 
a large portion of my rewards on a one month of uh, Xbox Gold so that I could play Borderlands 2 with my brother. Uh, but let's see. Yes, I can use my Bing Rewards points to get 100 Microsoft points. So, I don't know. But uh, can you then transfer those points to somebody? It's a it's a code. Like, oh, it's, it's a code, code yeah. really? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so all I have to do is uh, just spend like a, a day or so uh, searching for stuff on Bing? Uh, I think the shortest... Or is, 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 it, is, is, it, is it just like, like you search for one thing a day? Is that how it works? Uh, you get up it's to 10 points a day. Oh, I thought it was 20. Po- okay. I thought it was 20 points, but that would be 40 searches. Or is it... Hold on. Let me... Maybe maybe that's what it is, but it's like two... Oh, maybe it is 20. Yeah, it's 20. And but... you have to do two for one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's bing it and earn some points while we're looking it up. It's weird. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It says... Earn one credit per two Bing searches up to 15 credits a day, which actually it was 20 up until recently, but I see it waver randomly. Like mm. it'll, it was uh, 30 just a couple days ago, and today it's 15. I don't know, but either way, uh, I'm I'm sure I'm not the uh, I'm sure I'm not the first person to bring this up, but isn't it a bad sign that they have to pay people to use their search engine? <laughs> did anyone did anyone see the recent? Uh, Bing Google comparison. They were trying to run this big advertising deal about how, like, or in a blind survey or whatever, people chose Bing over Google. I heard that. Yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I never trust tests that are done by the person who won it. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's kind of like the Coke versus Pepsi thing. Yeah. Is it weird that I don't have a preference for either Coke or Pepsi? It is weird. Yes. It is? Oh. I, I think they game... taste exactly. I think they taste exactly the same. Paul, this is game cola. Come on. If, if you if you gave me a Coke and a Pepsi and told me to figure out which one was which, I would not. I'm like, am I like taste blind? Or blind blind if you can't read the labels. <laughs> <laughs> Good Paul, point. Paul's all about the Shasta. <laughs> the RC oh, I, I, cola. Yes. Oh, I used to buy a generic soda all the time. It was like a dollar for a giant jug of it. It was great. Yeah. No, up until recently... Uh, I was paying like 75 cents for name brand or uh, off brand soda. Nice, nice. It's the way to go. Yeah, for like two liter, you know. Whereas, dude, uh, getting an actual like Pepsi two liter now is like a dollar seventy five. I know those prices keep climbing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's just it's just sugar water. You're better off just drinking water or food. I mean, <laughs> that's it's hygienic. You know, it it kills bacteria. Yes. But uh, I, I think booze doesn't always have the same effects that a uh, soda does. For example, I don't think you would drink beer to really wake yourself up. <laughs> hey, Are you sure? Like oh, well, actually, yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess in the short term, maybe. Very short term. I guess so, you can only drink so much. call hair of the dog, uh, Paul. Yes, you just don't drink enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, Jed, you, you were talking deal, before Paul. about you were talking before about having. Cans of beer in your apartment for six months. I still have a bottle of wine in my fridge for my wedding. <laughs> Yikes. Wow. Yikes. You haven't broken into it yet. My parents tried. I have I mentioned this already? My parents tried to break into it, but we didn't have a corkscrew. Oh, yes. I think you did mention that. Yeah. Oh, okay. For God's sake, Paul, buy a corkscrew. <laughs> my, my mom took us to a garage sale the next day and bought us one. <laughs> it has a little smiley flower on it. I actually, uh, again, another one of the things that came off of the... Uh, off topic podcast was uh you helped someone out and they gave you a six pack of beer in repayment for it and then your parents were pleasantly surprised yes. but well we had, you mostly just used it for baking bread if i that's recall. right yes you did mention yeah. that yes <laughs> yes so still haven't had any alcohol since one time in middle school yeah no there's there's not really a good story it wasn't a bad experience or anything i just didn't like it well beer doesn't get used to you you get used to beer but why don't I just drink things that I don't have to get used to? Like it, like long term, is is beer really taste like? Is it really that great of an experience that it's worth the the time investment? Not to mention the, the <laughs> investment. Andy investment. thought so. Andy thought so. She didn't used to drink beer before she she would drink wine. Uh, and then we went to Ireland, and she's like, "Well, I'm in Ireland. I better start drinking beer." Um, and that's how she got started with beer. I don't know. I think I've seen way too many after-school specials. Like, I'm still terrified that the minute I start drinking alcohol, I'm going to be on the roof of the school peeing on a cop car, like in Boy Meets World. <laughs> like, it'll be it. Are you going to... And they got arrested for that. They went like to jail. I, do, I mean, I don't want to go to jail, you know? Yes. 
Well, I say. have a new purpose in life. Get Paul France and drunk and watch the <laughs> Many, Many have tried. None have, have succeeded yet, Mike. <laughs> I also went to college. Ah, but I am willing to drug you. <laughs> that is the extra mile that's needed, I think. <laughs> yes, I am willing to commit a crime <laughs> to get... <laughs> You've overestimated my morality. <laughs> so, video games. I've I wait. I've I have a video game I've been playing. Oh, do you? Have, have, I've been playing a video game. Have we been playing video games? Because I don't think that happens often here. Game called. Yeah. Games. I I have been playing a video game. Well, I think it's technically a video game. Um, oh, that's always a good opening. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we were talking about visual novels in the last podcast, so I picked up a couple and been playing oh, through them. I oh, got. Sorry. I got. I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Just to interject, uh, Michael Gray was just messaging me to ask if he was uh, needed on the podcast, and he says, just announced that I didn't get the job writing for a graphic novel, and I'll be fine. So, oh. uh, this is the perfect point, as he like just said that as you were entering this graphic novel <laughs> uh, topic. So anyway, go on. Michael Gray didn't get the job I, I, well, I've played two games that I think are, are very representative of the visual novel genre, uh, those being Hatoful Boyfriend and Kato wa Shouju. Um, for anyone who uh, is unfamiliar with these strange words I just used, the first one uh, is a dating sim where everyone's a pigeon except you. And the oh, second did one. Oh, you play had a full boyfriend? Yeah. Oh, I beat it. I got all like most. Well, not all the endings. Most of them, including the the, oh, the, the big final did ending. Get, did you get the pigeon that's going to try and kill you? But turns that's, out to be a dark wizard. That is like all of the pigeons. <laughs> that is all of them. It was a, it was I, a, I have to play this. It was an extremely dark game. Like, I thought it was just going to be, you know, light and fluffy, high school, everyone, you know, happy and peppy. No, there were, like, pigeons that are ripping my head off and keeping it in a jar, still alive. Like, it's, it's a <laughs> oh, 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 I have something to share, too. <laughs> okay. So, um, like, this is going back to Magfest, but we, uh... One, one well, of, one wait, did you uh, cosplay uh, as a pigeon? Or did did you cut somebody's head off and keep it in a jar? Well, yes, but that's a different conversation. <laughs> <laughs> he does go uh, all the way. That's not related to video games at all. I mean, everyone does that, right? <laughs> right. Most people. Right. Uh, no, this is uh, so. So one of our one of our awesome volunteers, uh, a lovely young woman named, by the name of Chris Ivy, uh, is doing one of the um, uh, teaching English in Japan programs right now. She just graduated from college. And they have a little like uh, she has a little game store, I guess, in the same town as her. And she found us some awesome old games, including Takeshi's Challenge. <laughs> awesome. Uh, for those who don't know, it's it was a game designed by Beat Takeshi, yeah. uh, who hates video games. <laughs> and the only way that you're just you play a guy, and it's almost like GTA. Uh, it, it's like back on the Nintendo, like the Famicom, and you could you know just go around and beat up and kill anyone you want to do in the game. The only way to beat the game is to uh, quit your job, divorce your wife, uh, then you I think you have to go get super drunk in a bar and do karaoke and the, the Famicom controllers had like a little mic on them that you could... Oh yeah. It, it had some voice input that I guess you know, you had wow. to do something to get, you know, a certain number of greats uh, great ratings on songs and then everybody in the bar would attack you and then you had to kill them all and then an old man would come up to you with a piece of paper and it had, he said it had a secret message that you had to wait an hour for and basically you have to put the controller down and not touch the game for exactly one hour and then you come, if you touch it you press a button or anything the paper's ruined you have to go sing again and beat up the, and we'll kill the whole bar again. And talk to the old man. And, and this was like an actual game that came out. This, this wasn't like a, a pen and teller kind of thing. It, no. Yes, it, it, it out it out desert bus. <laughs> <laughs> and once so after that hour of doing nothing, a message appears with like a map to a a remote desert island, and you have to take hang gliding lessons. And then you have to hang glide to this desert island while being shot out by shot at by UFOs. And you get there and you find like some treasure or something, and then the game ends. Wow. And if you wait five minutes, beat Takeshi's face, 
Beat Takeshi is one of the guys from um, uh, Most Extreme Elimination Challenge, I should mention. Yeah. Um, but his face shows up, and he's just like, you beat this crappy game. Don't take this so seriously. Go outside. <laughs> and that's the end of the game. Wow. Was he in Most Extreme Elimination Challenge? I knew it was called uh, Takeshi's Castle. Yeah, well, he was in the... I believe that was him, maybe. I, I'm, I'm not terribly well-versed on Japanese. I know he's in, um, he's in Battle Royale. Yes, he's also yeah. in Zatoichi, the, uh, the blind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so maybe maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, that's the game. <laughs> and, and we have a copy for Backfest. <laughs> and so I'm just going to send it out there. And I think, like, on a note card, I might write down how to beat the game <laughs> and just see who goes for oh, there, it. There is no way they're going to be able to get that controller to sit still for, for an hour. Is that what you said? Yeah, it's true. Like, yeah, they're they no, like, they're going to the have to time. guard that controller with their life. Yeah. There's no I, way they're going to be see that. trying to mess with it. <laughs> I want to see the chaos that ensues from people trying to beat this game. We even, and um, you know what's going to happen is that someone's going to find out what they're doing. Slice. Just having that game on like a pedestal in the middle of the room, <laughs> and you know people can come in like one at a time and try and beat Takeshi's challenge. Wow. And when they do that hour challenge, someone's going to figure out what they're doing. They're going to be a jerk like me and go up at minute 59 and press the A button. <laughs> and see, I'm okay with that. I mean, yeah. we have security. If anyone throws a punch, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, Paul, I've been talking to you about, you know, just having a bunch of terrible games there because mm -hmm. they're fun of me. So this can be there. We also got a uh, – she also picked up um, Mr. Mosquito 2. There is not uh, a sequel to that there's game. There's a sequel? There, there is. is. Oh, come on. <laughs> there is. Google it, my friend. Ugh. I'll do it right now. I mean, let me make sure. I no, no, no. Ding it and get some points for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not a great game. Not a bad game. I liked it. I thought I'm it was okay. still waiting for Doug O'Neill to give me my copy back. Doug O'Neill, uh, original game call a staff member from uh, 2003 or 2002, or whatever. Wow. He stole. He borrowed my copy to review it, and I haven't gotten it back since. I thought we. I'm, I thought I'm we had assuming a... there's still a good chance they'll be giving it back. Like, what's the statute of limitations there? Oh God, like, I think Mr. Mosquito Two is somehow worse than the first game. <laughs> there, like, there are more people in skimpy poses, and then you, there's just a dude with a. Pretty kicking six pack. <laughs> yeah, for, for uh, anyone who hasn't played this game, uh, which I hope is all of you, because this game is is not is not okay. <laughs> you you play as a mosquito, and um, I'm not sure if the t this isn't what the rules say you're supposed to do, but I'm sure it was the actual intent of the game. You essentially just fly around and uh, and look at girls. Like oh, that's the game. Okay, all I remember is uh, be careful really? what you search for, and. Like this is why I remember it being related to Game Cola is that someone searched for uh, Mr. Mosquito lands on a boob, and that was <laughs> <laughs> one of the be careful. With that's like I can only assume that's the purpose of the game. That's it's so creepy. Oh, I don't remember oh, that. Okay, okay. Now I want to play it again. I got I got the list here of things we got, and actually they're these are some, they're they're still very interesting. Um, so yes, yeah, so we got Takeshi's Challenge, Mr. Mosquito Two. Squares Tom Sawyer, which is a Famicom RPG in which based Tom on Tom Sawyer. And, and it, it looks like fan. It looks like Final Fantasy if everyone was from Tom Sawyer. Uh, there's also it's also really racist. Yes. Um, I mean we're we're talking people African Americans that look like you know white people in blackface with giant lips. Yeah, because like Mr. Popo. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Or, or like, you know, the first iteration of Jinx, because, you know, <laughs> in Japan, they don't quite get the whole race thing with us over here. Yeah. It's just, it's like, oh, that happened. Mike, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying this. It, it, you're not just, like, just going for the, the super obvious bad games. You're, you're really going, dare I say, outside the mainstream for them. And Very then, cool. and I, I don't know if this is bad or not, Paul, feel free to contest. We also got Super Back to the Future 2. <laughs> <laughs> Please, somebody get to the part where all the poop falls down on you. That's a... Is that something that happens? That's the, that's the last level. Poop rains down from the heavens and you have to platform on it. Yeah, didn't you read the Game Color view of this? <laughs> I did not! Did you watch the videos? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that was so like Mad a video Mad game highlight. So, those now. And... 
So wait, are you I, expecting I, I people our, to, to visit our, the, our the other parts of the convention? Because this sounds like the only the best part. Great names. I'm still trying to get her to to to. I'm, well, hopefully she'll be able to find uh, LSD. It's um the game. It's a game. <laughs> uh, but it might. As it's well a game, be officer. Drunk. Believe me. No, really. <laughs> It might as well be the drug. I believe it's for PlayStation. Let's I've heard see. of it. I think I might have downloaded it for a future speak of There we go. Yeah, LSD um, Dream Emulator, 1998 Japan only PlayStation game that simulates what it's like to be in a dream. Yeah. Um, let's see. Game is based on a dream journal kept for over 10 years. I'm reading this from Crack.com, by the way. Um, See, Dream Journal kept for over 10 years by a member of the developing team uh, consists of a massive open world like GTA if it were filled with inexplicable things rendered in Mario 64 type graphics. <laughs> no dialogue whatsoever. Okay. Every time you start the game, you appear in a different location. Locations range from bright colored psychedelic places filled with bizarre objects and characters to dark Mostly abandoned landscapes. And in the screenshot of the dark, mostly abandoned light landscape, it is a um, a desolate looking like underpass with a woman hanging from a street light. Uh, hanging like a monkey. Anything or anyone will cause the screen to fade and teleport you to another random place. After a while, you might start seeing the same places again. The game keeps it interesting by doing things like replacing doors with women's faces or filling the walls with <laughs> eyes that slowly follow you as you walk past. Each dream lasts ten minutes, at which point you're sent back to the main menu and given the option to start another one. However, there are also more abrupt ways to wake up, like falling off a cliff, coming across certain objects, or running into the Gray Man, a faceless gentleman in a black raincoat who can show up anywhere in the dream world and is the only one who can kill you. Is he slender, perhaps? He is not. He is, uh, yeah, no, he's, he's not Slender Man. But, uh, also apparently LSD stands for Lovely Sweet Dream. Wow. <laughs> that sounds so good. Yeah. I, she, she's gonna keep looking for that because she insists that we really, really must have that game. Uh, but yeah, we're, uh, I'm trying to get more and more of these crazy ass games. But it's just great. Also, I'm a friggin' terrible person. So. <laughs> yeah, we can all agree on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially Nathaniel after I keep ruining his D&D game. Oh, you are doing anything but ruining it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so has anyone else played a video game recently? Here on Video Game Cola? I was curious what Paul thought of uh, Katawa Shoujo, because I ended oh. up really liking it. Oh, you're you're not gonna like what I have to say. <laughs> oh, I remember, okay, I remember, fine. I remember what you had to say, Paul. Yeah, yeah, I was, I, I, I went on a, 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 a bit of a Twitter monologue about this. Um, it's, it's actually, there's nothing about the game itself I don't like. Um, it, 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 it seemed, it seemed very. Uh, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this is uh, what Christian Porter delightfully referred to earlier as the, the cripple game. Yeah, the game where you, well, actually, that's Katawa Shoujo is such an offensive word in Japan, or Katawa, it means, I mean, the best translation you could give it is gimp chicks. <laughs> but it's such an offensive well, then... word that they actually have banned it from their TV. You can't say it on their TV. Uh, well. Wait, what? What chicks? Gimp. Oh, uh, gimp. Gimp, okay. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I was getting into it. I was I was picking my, my favorite cripple girls that I wanted to date. Um, I was I was going for the... Uh, the, the class president and her friend, although I realized later that it's it's not a package deal. You only get the class president, <laughs> which was a little yeah. <laughs> so so question: How how exactly are these characters games? I mean, one has no a... legs. One has uh one one is a burn victim. One is blind. One is deaf. What? Well, is that it? No I'm one sorry, is one is a thalidomide. Edit that out, please. Like, oh oh yes, one has the one is thalidomide. Yes. Wasn't yeah. that one of the games that uh, Who's He What's It reviewed for his things where you review dirty games that have bad things in them? <laughs> um, it, it, it has uh, bad things in them. I, I don't think Matt uh, reviewed it, though. Matt! Yes. Let us be clear here. We're all adults. <laughs> They're all naughty all bits. With the Gimp Girls. But and also, I didn't get that far. is, is sure Lizzo Christian okay with can, this? I, I didn't get What's that far, but I'm sure Christian can confirm or deny. What? What did he say? 
Are, are there um, explicit scenes in this game? Yes, there are. <laughs> Although you can turn them off, and I hear it's just pictures of fruits. <laughs> what, what is what is the name of this game again? Katawa Shoujo. It's on. It's reviewed on Game Cola, isn't it? Or at least you made a comment about it coming out. I think Christian I, just mentioned it, right? I put it in the news. Yeah, I that's right. That was it. That was it. Okay. I still might review it someday. I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it was well written, and they ended up. It ended up not being a joke. I thought it was yeah, going to be yeah. like a, a kind of a poor taste joke. Well, that was the original funny. intent too, wasn't it? Like, wasn't it was just some guy on some forum like making a joke? Like, wouldn't it be funny if there was a dating sim and then uh, a it bunch of people? It was originally, I guess, it was the sketch of this guy who was a professional uh, visual novel maker, and he thought that would be a cool idea, but he never actually made it. Okay. And people okay. were just kind of pouring over those notes. Were like, this would be awesome. Let's make this. Yeah, wasn't it a group of people from uh, something awful or from 4chan? Even 4chan. Worse. Oh wow, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, that, I that makes it even more surprising that I mean, yeah, they they take such a, a delicate hand with the subject. I mean, yeah. there's there's no underlying well, mocking in the game whatsoever. At least not what I saw. I didn't really get that. No, far. I I played through all the storylines and there was wow. there wasn't any. It was very maturely done, and the storylines were well written. I guess at first, it was going to be more violent. They they might have had like a rape option at one okay. point. Okay. And then people from 4chan left, and the people who know how to make games and write things stayed. And those people were like, let's not ever do that. How about that? And those people won out, thankfully. But yeah, and I, it was I, I, more delicate, and any of the adult scenes were tastefully done, except for maybe the butt sex with the cripple, with the uh, girl with no legs. But that was more a light comedy moment. <laughs> <laughs> Light comedy in this game. Light comedy butt sex. <laughs> oh wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have any real criticism of the game itself. I think it just made me realize that uh, as much as I talk on here about how I like games with no gameplay, uh, <laughs> it turns out when that's literally true, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I mean, I, I, I just, it made me. I spent the whole time thinking I could be watching a movie instead of doing this. I could be reading a book. Like, it would be the same experience. It would be almost the same experience because uh, I don't know how this game compares to other visual novels, but they're, as far as I got, there. I think I had two interactions in, like, three hours. So, there, I don't know. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get myself into it, which is very surprising because I'm, I'm such a big proponent of story in games, but uh, apparently there, there is a point where it's too much for me. I've only played a few visual novels, but there seem to be two kinds, and one is the kind where you're always, like, kind of choosing what you do, and it brings up certain stats, and some girls like those stats, and some girls like okay. the other stats that you're neglecting. And there's yeah. others where you're just reading and reading and reading and reading, and, like, three times in six hours, you're going to make a choice. Well, a hot to full boyfriend had that. Like, every day you would have your choice of whether you want to go to the gym or uh, study or go to yeah. music class. Although I, guess, I couldn't, for the life of me, figure out what those stats had. I think, like, if you maxed out one stat, you would get the best ending with one particular character or something like that. But uh, it yeah. didn't seem to have a huge impact on which ending you actually got. Yeah, um, usually going to the gym all the time gets you the sporty girl, but the brainy <laughs> girl's not going to like you. Something like uh, that. Here we go. I found the image gallery for uh, Katawa Shoujo. I have... Wait, why is, why is there one... T I guess it's a teacher from Katawa Shoujo? I'm just seeing a screen cap where it's just this guy named Mutao, Mutu, Mutuo, I am sorry, I'm terrible with pronunciation. Hang around after class and we can either discuss it or I can show you how to make explosives in the lab. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe it's good that we're not getting our fan base involved with this. <laughs> so, uh, as we're sort of rounding up our topic about uh, visual novels, we're going to invite a Game Cola guest uh, Game Cola super fan Joe Reviewer is going to be added to the call uh, at this moment and to help us talk about some visual novels. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hey, Hello. Joe. Good. You just walked into a goddamn landmine field. <laughs> <laughs> One that the teacher helped you make. <laughs> uh, we, were, we were just talking about uh, visual novels, uh, like dating games and such. Uh, do you have uh, do you have any comments to make on this uh, subject? Do you, have you ever played um, any that you're willing to have your children listen to ten, fifteen years down the road? Uh, visual novels. I've seen people play visual novels. I don't think I've ever actually played one myself. Those are generally computer ones, and 
My computer isn't the best at running computer games. Uh, visual novels are pretty. Not yeah, they, they don't. Completely. They don't take up a lot of resources. Yeah. You you could play Hot Tiffle Boyfriend if you really wanted to. <laughs> and you should. Yeah, you do. You <laughs> That game will blow your mind. You will see the world in a whole new way. Have you actually played it, Mike? I have not. I want to. <laughs> I yeah, really I believe want you to. just that's learned about it on I this podcast. Set, I want to set that game up in Magfest. I want. That's what I want to do. <laughs> and there's no there's no naughty parts in that game, huh? Um. No, actually, I was. Uh, I don't believe so. Except for uh, getting I thought your that head would eaten. be the funniest part. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm looking at another. Um, Another screen cap for Katawa Shoujo. Mm. And one of the girls who doesn't have any physical deformities or anything from what I can see. Except for the fact she's wearing a shirt that says Bush Cheney 2004. <laughs> That's because you can't see her legs, which don't exist. I can see legs. I can see the top of legs. She's standing. She's, well, it's more, the, she's it's more like her head. ankles, isn't it? Her well, no, it's, thighs. No, no, it's her whole leg. She wears prosthetic, oh, though. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, 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 no, no. Is it the one with the pink hair? Yeah. She doesn't have... She's, like, the translator for the deaf girl. Oh. Who is apparently Republican. <laughs> and in I, the I past. Think... I, I don't know if that's medically considered a handicap. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> <laughs> But let's talk, let's 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 maybe I should I shouldn't open that can of worms. So Joe, uh, have you been playing any video games? Yes, I have been playing video games. What are you playing? Um, just recently I finished uh, playing a game that I might try to review and submit a guest review for. Okay. And um, but a lot of my focus right now is actually getting uh trying to get one of my friends into playing some video games for the first time. Uh, what 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 just been? What games are you mm-hmm. trying to uh, force upon them? <laughs> um, uh, right now I've been starting with Mega Man and oh. Pokemon. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm laughing because we spent like 40 minutes talking about Pokemon this podcast. <laughs> At least I think <laughs> I kind of blacked out during it. But I missed the part about Pokemon. Oh, I'm uh. trying to bring it back up. Yes, we were, we were talking at length. Actually, I started off by trying to say some stuff about, oh yeah, we're going to totally be on topic and not talk about mainstream games in this podcast, and then we ended up talking about Pokemon for a while. <laughs> but uh, also, I know Nathaniel... Oh, actually, um, let me, we, we were uh, raising this question earlier. Uh, oh, which, which Pokemon do you think tastes the best? Yeah. Apparently, Farfetch'd is supposed to taste really good, and it's almost extinct <laughs> because of it. Interesting, because actually, that's the one that I was going to say probably tastes pretty good. Like, that's that little that little stick thing that it carries around with them yeah, is leak. actually a leak that's yeah. supposed to be served yeah. with them. Which... Yeah, that's a good, well. Isn't it's there a, a Pokemon made of ice actually. cream? <laughs> a Pokemon what? Isn't there a Pokemon made of ice cream now? Yes. It looks. <laughs> it looks. Yeah. See, there you go. I mean, that that's that would be the obvious choice. Wow. Huh. I'm just not going outside the mainstream on this one, I guess. <laughs> no, no, that was that was not a criticism. I would love to eat a Pokemon made of ice cream. All right then. Yeah, the middle is Diglett. <laughs> it's already it a loaf. You just slice it up. I mean, Magikarp is pretty much food already, isn't it? Uh, you know, Magikarp sushi. is bony and not very pleasant to eat. I wouldn't imagine Magikarp would taste very good. Yeah. Well, maybe it's like a rare delicacy, though, since you can only get so much of it. I don't think there's, there's any there's limit nothing on Magikarp. Delicate or a delicacy-ish about Magikarp. It's Magikarp. <laughs> you have not eaten a Magikarp, Mike. I, I don't think you can, like you can saying, make these statements. It's like saying it's hard to get to the really tasty parts of grass. So grass <laughs> is delicate. <laughs> wow. According to the games, you can just tie a rope to a stick and catch a Magikarp. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so they're they're not rare, but um, it's not easy to obtain a large amount of magic carp meat. One could say. I mean, there's a lot of work that would go into preparing that. It's not like they're gonna fight back. Well, if they're level 15, they can use tackle. Look, magic carp is the only Pokemon I know. Okay, so I'm trying my best. <laughs> and there's always there is always the guy in every game that is like, I'm gonna beat you with my super cool team of Pokemon. And they have six magic cards. <laughs> I think in the last game they actually had uh, they were all like level fifty magic cards, which is still just it's magic cards. 
Oh, I always thought the Dragon Warrior boss. Monsters was better than Pokemon. Dragon Warrior Monsters? Yeah, it's the uh, the Dragon Warrior ripoff of Pokemon. Oh no, I know about it. I've I've played it. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I've uh I played it a lot in uh whenever it came out, the first and the second one anyway. I never got the DS one. I played the first one. Uh, like it was during a time when I was being hauled around to New York and Florida, and I was stuck in the back of the car for yes. great lengths of time. So. That is that is a car game. Yeah. That is definitely a car game. Yeah, absolutely. So, I don't know. I, I think I just liked it because I was coming off of uh, Dragon Warrior 7 on the PlayStation, so I knew all the monsters already. Yeah, slime. And also slime. Jewel Bag. Jewel Bag? Jewel Bag. Was there one that was... Never, Let's never keep this know. podcast family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, after we were talking about Katawa Shoujo. <laughs> As family friendly. Yes. No, I had a lot of fun with Dragon Warrior Monsters. And I remember being uh, somewhat annoyed with the game at certain times where, like, it was kind of the same exact thing over and over, and me being mm-hmm. an, a, a completionist, it's one thing to be like, oh, well, I'm going to go to every you know little area of this uh, dungeon map for four levels, eight levels, 12 levels. But then later in the game, when it's like 40 levels of these <laughs> huge maps... There's absolutely no point to going to all of them. It's just like, please, like as fast as I can, just get through this stupid dungeon. So I, I ran into the problem where the thing that I was most interested in the game was uh, mating all of the characters and seeing what would pop out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the problem was, you like you'd have to get each creature to like a level ten before you could mate it, yeah. um, and then you know they they pop out of level one. So my yeah, team yeah, yeah. was constantly just between levels one and ten because as soon as it got to whatever. Uh, the age was that I, w- I was ready. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess might uh, say something about me personally. I don't know. This con- I was going to say, a little creepy. Weren't, weren't we talking about PETA earlier? <laughs> it's, it's, well, it's I mean, I don't, I don't do that with animals in real life. But uh, video games. I don't know. Uh, is it is it getting late enough in the podcast? We've been recording for an hour and a half, which we started about 15 minutes in. So should we go to emails? I, th- I think we talk about what game I'm playing. Oh, okay, okay. What game are you playing, Nathaniel? I'll tell you. Mega Man 7. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mega Man what? Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 seriously. Joe has been following my backloggery and keeping track of the games that I've been playing, uh, which all of you should be doing too because it's awesome. And I have been playing Mega Man X7, which is not really anything like any of the other games in the X series. Uh, yes, it's actually a Mega Man game I have not yet played. Oh. So. Wait, is that the one on, uh, is that yeah. on PlayStation yeah. 1? Uh, PlayStation 2. Oh, okay. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and I have been a Nintendo-only guy all my life, so it's very strange to actually be in possession of a PlayStation to be able to play this game. But uh, unlike the rest of the Mega Man X series, which is standard action platformer, bounce off some walls, shoot some stuff, collect some items, have a great time. It's really more of a 3D RPG platformer that takes heavy inspiration from the Mega Man X series and has a lot of good ideas and is playable but doesn't really have the sense of what it means to be a fun video game. It's got the challenge, it just doesn't have all of the enjoyment. Uh, one particular example, and this is all the Mega Manning that I'm planning on doing, is uh, one boss battle that I fought with a, a boss named Flame Hyenard, which gives you a sense of uh, where the creativity uh, barrel level was uh, by the time they got to there. And you're on this platform in the middle of a lava field, and you've got this big four-legged walking beastie, sort of like the AT-ATs from Star Wars, but uh, more animally, uh, marching around the side in, in the lava, and what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to shoot out the legs of this thing so it topples over, and then hop up onto the side of it, and then fight the boss up there in the top. But they don't really tell you that, and until you get really, really close, you don't see the targeting crosshairs on the legs. Um, well, I guess they do shout at you, oh, hey, shoot the legs, but you're like, there's two, I'm, I'm too busy with these two flame Hyenard clones or something uh, that are running circles around me, throwing fireballs at me, shouting, burn it to the ground, burn it to the ground, burn it to the ground. Like every time they fire a shot, which is multiple times per second, they shout, burn it to the ground. (laughs) So I quickly had my TV on mute. And then finally, after taking forever to destroy the both of them, said, okay, now I'm going to take care of the big machine. And then two more clones jump down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I I can't handle this. And so, you know, I, I shoot the legs out and the thing falls over. 
And then I'm like, okay, do I need to kill everything all at once and then something will happen? And no, I'm realizing now, oh, you can wall kick up the side of the big beastie to get to the next part of it. But because the game is inconsistent about what surfaces you can wall jump off of, uh, because sometimes you can and sometimes you can't, and there's really no way visually to tell. It's just it would be convenient for you to jump off as part of this puzzle, uh, bounce off this wall here. Otherwise, we don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like sitting around here for 10 minutes trying to figure out what to do. Finally get on top, and then the enemy is circling around me. There are missiles launching up from the top, and I'm caught in a crossfire fireballs, and I keep getting bounced back because as this thing's moving around, my character is sort of gliding backwards on the machine, um, so I can't even stand still in one place. And they're still running circles around me, throwing fireballs at me, burning it to the ground! And when I get out of the boundaries, I realize it's too late, when I get out of the boundaries of the center of the machine, they do this automatic attack where they all converge on me, do massive damage, and knock me back to the center. So I'm playing within the boundaries, and I can't go you know, past the borders or else they'll all smack me, while missiles are firing out from underneath my feet. And I don't have enough weapon energy to actually destroy the boss because the amount of weapon energy it takes to fire one shot while he's spinning around in circles and you're auto-targeting instead of firing in the direction that you're pointing, uh, you're wasting a lot of ammo. So I had to improvise and use a tornado weapon to take them all out. And then then promptly, after like 15, 20 minutes, actually did beat him and said, I don't know if I want to keep playing this game. <laughs> so, well, that I was my, uh, my most miserable what boss game is this? I've had in a long time. What game is this? Mega Man X7 for the PlayStation 2. Oh, yeah, that's the one I skipped. <laughs> <laughs> what I've, I've found as, as a diehard Mega Man fan, <clears throat> I've found some redeeming qualities to it. There are some good ideas about it, uh, which I'm not going to bother to enumerate right now, uh, unless people really, really want to hear it. But there are some good qualities to it. It's just overall, the execution is pretty weak, or they just... The, so many little things uh, keep the game from being at least average enjoyable instead of you really need to be a big Mega Man fan or really into 3D platformers with endless unskippable cutscenes to get it and to enjoy it. So that's my spiel. Or you just need to hate yourself, apparently. One or the other. So there, Joe. You've gotten some Mega Man. You've gotten some Pokemon. <laughs> yes. We're so not mainstream, you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> what, what's everyone's favorite Mario game? Uh, Super Mario Picross. <laughs> Mario's missing. Uh, Mario in time. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the Virtual Boy one? I think that's, that's the old left. Or a Hotel Mario, perhaps. <laughs> I think officially it's Mario Super Mario RPG, but of the platformers, I think Mario 2 is probably my favorite. Mario 3 on the Game Boy. Really? Why the Game Boy version? Because it was the first game I ever owned. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm wait. sorry. Um, is it, do you mean uh, Mario, uh, Land Mario, Mario, Mario Land or the port of Mario Super Mario Bros. The Brothers port 3? of Super Mario Bros. 3 on the Game Boy. It was the first game I ever owned. I was say, Super Mario Land 3 is Wario Land. Yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, straight on them thing. Mm -hmm. Did did they have voices in that game? In, in Mario Land? Like, oh, sorry, in uh, Mario Three on the Game Boy Advance, does does Mario make little noises when he jumps, for example? No. Um, I think the sound effects. The really the only major difference is the graphics. They're okay. updated. They're updated to the uh, the Mario All Stars version graphics. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Which uh, I mean, I grew up with them, so. <laughs> <laughs> It, I mean, it, I don't know what it would look like to someone who grew up with the NES game. But, oh, um, I, I, I thought the uh, Super Nintendo version looked great. Yeah. yeah. And um, then... I, hmm? Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, and then some of the extra stuff at the end, there's some extra stuff after you beat the game. Like, after you beat the game, uh, you can go back and play some of the... You can play all the levels, and some of the secrets in the game, they make a little bit more clear if you go back to a level after you've beaten the game on the file. Now, did you have the e-reader also? No, I did not. Oh, uh, there's supposed to be some sort of a bonus world in that version of Super Mario Bros. 3 uh, mm -hmm. that you unlock if you have the e-reader and a ver variety of the e-reader cards where they, like, mix in elements from Mario's 1, 2, 3, and world. So, like, you'll be playing a level that's reminiscent of Mario 3, and, like, the, the football guy will come and throw footballs at you, <laughs> stuff like that. And you, then you'll be able to kill him by throwing vegetables from Mario 2. It's... it's ridiculous. I tried to do a video playthrough of it at one time, but I couldn't get all that e-reader stuff to work. Oh. Hate those before, guys. <laughs> oh, the Mario 3 also, it also has, like, this Mario arcade game that 
came with all of the sort of yes. the Mario Advance line. And you, if you had a Link cable, you could play multiplayer with it. That was uh, in the All Stars version too. I used to play that with my cousins. <laughs> But um, anyway, I, I was actually kidding when I asked everyone what their favorite Mario game was. Should I cut that out? No, no, it's fine. <laughs> no, I feel bad actually because, because we brought poor Joe in and then he didn't get to talk at all until now. Yes. Um, That's my that fault. You can blame me. No, no, no. It's not. It's it's nobody's fault. We're all very sorry, Joe. Yes. Is there, is there anything your apology there anything? for letting me on the podcast that I like so much? <laughs> is there anything you'd like to talk about, Joe? Yes. Um. The only thing I came to talk about was just some of the interesting things I had learned watching my friend play these games for the first time that I had, like, come to know inside out. Yeah. Um, like, with Pokemon, like, uh, the Zubats in the caves, like, that's something that you always, people who play Pokemon a lot talk about, it's like, ah, oh, Zubat, it's the generic Pokemon that bothers you in the cave. And it was interesting to see that I hadn't told my friend this, yet she still expressed frustration. For some reason, she couldn't find a Geodude, which was odd. <laughs> you go into a cave, and it's like, Geodude, it's supposed to be there. So, but she made it to Chill Man on her first try in Mega Man 10, so... That's better than I did. <laughs> Although, well, so it was also with it. Uh, easy mode. Mm. Yeah. That's why I chose one of the newer ones, because it's got the easy mode that's actually easy <laughs> for a first-time player. I, uh, I do want to mention, though, Again, sorry about the Pokemon, but it is worth mentioning because people have been, you know, making jokes about it. Uh, in Black and White 2, there's an area uh, in the sewers of this one city. Oh, yeah, I've heard about this. Where you have both Zubats, which are the one of the most universally reviled Pokemon because they're just mm-hmm. everywhere, and Rattatas. Rattata. Yeah. Just, you know, the lame, you know, fodder Pokemon the generic it's just, it's a of the generic. full of them. Yeah. And they're everywhere. So wait, is that why is that why people hate Zubats? They're they're just generic. They're, they're too yeah, easy. They're I mean, all over the place. They're everywhere. Kind of thing. And it's just that Zubats everywhere. Well, I mean, and they tend to have really annoying um, attacks, like supersonic. Yeah. Yeah, almost for some, you know, even though it's supposed to not hit very often, it still always hits you. It always hits you, but never hits the enemy. Mm-hmm. Mixed with used and whatnot. And then you always hit yourself in confusion, even though it's supposed to be 50. <laughs> you know, the Geodude thing, uh, this, this is one of those crazy Pokemon fan things. Uh, there's a, such a thing called as, as shiny Pokemon, which are Pokemon yep. with palette swap. And I believe the chances of encountering them in the wild are... One in 8,000 something? Yeah, one, th- one in 8,192, I think. <laughs> yeah, that uh, sounds right. And th- there are some ways to get that that ratio up, but yeah. um, like Game Genie, yeah. that yes, there are other you know in-game mechanics uh, as well. <laughs> but um, basically, everyone I play Pokemon with it found like at least one shiny. That's the one. And then I was in a cave one time, and I found a, a shiny Geodude. And it's kind of cool because it's a gold Geodude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gold. That's uh, pretty, uh, pretty rolling here. And then the damn thing you self-destruct. Yeah. Oh gosh. And uh, yeah, just left me, left me hanging. I did, I did catch a shiny uh, in um, in black and white or in white too, but unfortunately it was a patrat, which is the black and white equivalent of a rat. <laughs> so. I that. think I've caught three shiny Pokemon ever, two of which were in the same game. Well, I have friends that have whole teams of them because they. Do this in-game Poke Walker radar thing you can do. But oh, I, the no, Dream Radar? I, no, it's something else. But. Something else. So here's a question: Are newer Pokemon games backwards compatible with older ones? To an extent. Yes. Because yes. I was always curious, like, it, what would happen? It kind of depends on where you're talking about. They're backwards compatible with the more, I mean, like, the more immediate you get. Technically speaking, as long as you had a couple of games from across the generations, you could get a Pokemon from Pokemon Blue into Pokemon Black 2 or White 2. Okay. Yeah. Well, in, right. in general, you can move your Pokemon forward, um, but you can't move them back. Okay. Uh, Generation-wise. Uh, just because, you know, there's... No, it didn't exist back data then. Yeah, for a Pokemon, you know, from Diamond and Pearl and Ruby and Sapphire. 
But you know, in Ruby with Ruby and Sapphire, well, you could do you couldn't do it with like any of uh any of the Game Boy or Game Boy Color ones because they kind of completely rehauled the um the the code base for the Pokemon. Okay. So starting with Ruby and Sapphire, you can move the Pokemon. Uh, you can trade them over to um uh like Leaf Green or Fire Red. That's why half the reason they did the, the remakes of those all for the Game Boy games. Okay. Then when you had the DS ones. You could plug the um, plug the, the oh. Game Boy Advance game into a, a DS or a DS Lite, and you could bring over Pokemon from those game carts to your Diamond or Pearl game. Uh, Six at a time, every 24 hours. Yes, hmm. the PAL part. And then for a while, you know, you could just you know regularly trade them in between the games on the DS. Now that we've gotten up to the latest generation, black and white, you there was like a little download game you could do to transfer your Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl, Soul Silver, Heart Gold, etc., over to you know black and white or black and white too. But they can't go back because you know you can't send back a Chandelure to Gen Four because it has no idea what a Chandelure is. So. <laughs> okay, sorry to interrupt slightly. Part of what brings this up is, as I was cleaning out my room recently, I found uh, my old Generation 1 Digimon, and I I felt so terrible because I started it up, and I was like, it's going to be all alone. It's going to be alone <laughs> in this universe. The only <laughs> Generation 1 Digimon <laughs> left in existence. Are those the ones on a keychain? Yes, like the little... I have the red brick one uh, i had the red brick one too yeah there was like also a gray one i think <laughs> yeah uh but and mine threw poop but i remembered that at some point in history uh a friend of mine had given me like i don't know generation three or four or something like that uh digimon it's like completely differently shaped i was like i don't know the the connector looks like it would fit with this and I started it up, and they can battle. And I was so happy that, like, they made it backwards compatible <laughs> to work with the original generation Digimon, because I'm pretty sure that, like, a generation after that probably wouldn't work. Like, they have to have changed at some point, I, I figure. Uh, but this one works with the old one. I was so happy that, like, I could, you know, train it and everything properly. So, I don't know, is, is, is Digimon a video game? Is that... Certainly is. That was an inspiring tale. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, does would a Pokemon Pikachu, the little like original pedometer thing, would that count as a video game? I don't know what counts as a video yeah. game. It's Technically down, speaking, the original Pokemon, first Pokemon was Rhydon. Well, no, I mean, uh, like the actual, the physical, the little pedometer thing. Oh, the Poke Walker. Yeah. The, well, no, the it. Walk- or something it, like it's that. It's called Pokemon Pikachu. Oh. Like, it... Hold on just a second. It's like a little LCD handheld. Yeah. Like, like a tiger electronic chain. device kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snap it on your belt. Can you guys hear that? Yes. That, yeah. Yes, that is Pokemon Pikachu. I'm holding it in my hand at this moment. Are, are you hurting him? No, um... Well, if it was... He was bad. If it... <laughs> If it was on, this would be it. Get in his ball. If it was on, this would be it. Uh, uh, getting points or whatever, because I'm walking. Oh, oh, I'm starting it up. I put the battery in. Pokemon Pikachu. Oh, oh, pop. Seven eight. Uh, what time is it? Ten p.m. <laughs> That's funny. They actually they did something like that for um. Soul Silver and Heart Gold, the Poke Walker. Yeah, that's what it's the Poke Walker. Oops. Oh. It's actually cool because, you know, you could uh, sync it up with your game and it would have, like, you could get items and Pokemon from the Poke Walker. But you could yeah. only level up one level at a time before you had to transfer back. Yeah. yeah. So you couldn't, like, run a marathon and have, like, a level 100 Pokemon. <laughs> Jetty, oh. are you putting something in the microwave? No, Pikachu is okay with you. Would you. Take Pikachu out of the microwave. No. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> well, we were asking which one is tastiest. <laughs> uh. 
Jenny, is, is it time to oh. move on to listener mail yet? Oh, okay. Sorry, let me put down Pikachu oh. for a second. Oh. No, 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 that's okay. Oh. No. No, okay. Uh, yes. Should we move on to reader mail? We we have two two whole emails, but they're both very long. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, now I realize that I should take the battery out, but I don't want to kill Pikachu. Like, I guess I should. Pikachu can make his own electricity. He'll be fine. Yes, See, there you that's go. true. That's a good point. I'll let him. I'll put him back in the little bag there. Okay. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Okay. Uh, so this one, this email that I got, uh, is somewhat concerning. A period of caution, or I don't know how to say that. Is it a dot of caution? Uh, apparently, according to the text of the email, it'd be a of caution or something like that. A of caution. Uh, so what? literally, it is a period. Yes, a period, like the the punctuation. And then it says of caution. Yes. Point of caution. A point of caution, perhaps. Uh, oh, uh, it's from the infamous comma, which uh, for those Game uh, Cola fans who visit the Game Cola chat. Wait, that guy? Yes. <laughs> yes. So you know what oh, I'm talking goodness. about. <laughs> when are we going to unmask this mystery man? Uh, I'm not oh, sure, man. but they they sent me a very concerning email here. Uh, are are you all sitting down? Uh, I'm assuming you are if you're doing the podcast. <laughs> you're not supposed to podcast standing up. Uh. I don't know. Actually, I I, I did the uh, the Paul and Jetty show standing up. Really? Yeah, remember I told you I was like walking around with my microphone in my hand. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, you. I'm hanging from a lamppost in someone's dream somewhere. <laughs> Game Cola podcasters, it has come to my attention after reviewing several podcasts that there is a severe lack of punctuation represented in these pieces of media. I will not bring the extremes in since I have not reviewed every podcast, but suffice to say I have not yet encountered one piece of punctuation pronounced. Now, I actually have to say, we have said dot, dot, dot when reading previous emails. Anyway. <laughs> so so we're, we're looking for a, a, a Victor Borga shtick here? Is that what we're going for? Victor Borga? Wow. That's a reference yeah. even I don't make. <laughs> Borga. I know Victor Borga. I know Victor Borga. He's the guy who, like, makes the f- and the p- Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, I think you guys are exactly correct. Because continuing in this email, I would strongly suggest that you begin speaking uh, punk to anglaise, uh, the proper language that represents those words you use and the uh, glorious literary articles that are punctuation. For example, at the end of a statement, all that simply needs to be done is to place what is the equivalent of a pop in your native tongues. Likewise, in place of commas, a flip is enough to get the representation established. I believe my demands to be quite reasonable, and I hope they are met with liberal acceptance. Otherwise, I'll have to get all my punctuam munition and stuff it into my cannon and lay waste to Game Cola headquarters. Trust me, I know it's based on the moon. Yours truly, the infamous <laughs> comma. P.S. Oh, okay. Yes, my giant punctuation-based cannon can reach the moon. Thank you very much. Okay, so if it's somebody who thinks Game Cola headquarters is on the moon, that's probably somebody who followed me from my Gemini Laser YouTube channel. Because whenever anybody asks where I live, I tell them, quite honestly, the moon. I live in my secret moon base on the moon. So that's what my guess is. Somebody I dragged along. So who do we know? What what Game Cola fan do we know that also is a big fan of Nathaniel and his work? I actually thought it was Jeff Day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was someone in middle all. school because that that's the type of, you know, pretentious <laughs> stuff I used to try and do in middle school. <laughs> okay, so our, op- our options are Jeff Day or a time-traveling Mike Ridgeway. <laughs> <laughs> Touche, Paul. Touche. So either way, it's equally plausible. So are, 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 are we going to start pronouncing our, our punctuation that way? So so what were you guys uh, saying about pop and flip? Like the Victor Borga thing? Yeah. He has, like, this whole act where he pronounces punctuation. Um, he, like, reads a story, but he says it, like, he does it, like, really fast, obviously, because he's practiced it. <laughs> it just sounds kind of funny. Because, like, one day, <laughs> yeah, as I was walking in the park, I saw this lady. <laughs> and it's funny for exactly 30 seconds before you just want to punch him in the face. <laughs> 
Yeah, we we've been recording for like an hour and a half. I don't I don't think we should do that for that length of time. No, oh. well, I don't know. I mean, our moon base is going to be hit with a comma and so <laughs> because because you do have a way of saying punctuation in your sentences. They're called pauses, and really, punctuation is just there to denote pauses in human speech. Now, I do have to say there was a PSS that says. For the head of this project, i.e. Mr. Jadudrazizakak, <laughs> this email is meant to be taken completely seriously. The fact that a piece of punctuation is emailing you in a podcast most certainly means that someone means business, and that you should fear for the site. There most certainly isn't anyone who is in any way <laughs> involved with Game Cola pretending to be a character for the entertainment of the <laughs> Game Cola fans. You Wait, have so it warned. is time-traveling Mike Ridgway? <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> well, if I had the ability to travel through time, do you really think I? Yeah, I, I might actually do this. This, this sounds like that. I think this is absolutely like, within like, your abilities, travel. Mike. <laughs> no, no, yeah, this is that's legit, actually. Well played, future me. Well played. <laughs> or past me. Yeah, I thought it was past you. Guess not past. Yeah, well, I think it was past you, actually. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe I gave myself amnesia. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's you from a doomed timeline. Yeah. And this like is his great plan to save it. Better because anything would... Well, this is just the alpha timeline that survived. The doomed timeline died out, but it still had an effect on the alpha timeline, so... Anyway. Sure. Should, we, should we read the other email now? Yes, uh, Paul, I will let you uh, oh, read this. That's right. So are, are we actually just agreeing that we are disinclined to acquiesce to the infamous commas demands? Uh... Hey, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, that's I don't, how the tourists win. This is America. We don't, we don't bow down to communists. 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 Ah, Jenny, please. Okay. Uh, next, next email. This is one I actually received in my personal email account in regard to something we were talking about in the last episode. Um, if you recall, we were talking about Ace Attorney Five, which then had just uh, very recently been announced for U.S. release. Uh, and we were specifically talking about how it seems that Maya is not going to have a role in this game, or at least if she is, they haven't made it at all apparent, um, and we were complaining about that. So this person uh, responded. All right. <clears throat> Hello. I just listened to Game Pole Podcast number 54. I was especially interested in the discussion of Ace Attorney 5, including the part where you're discussing the likely absence of Maya Faye. Uh, a lot of people agree with you, so I was thinking you might be interested in this petition, uh, and the petition is called Maya Faye Should Be in Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney 5. It's fine having new characters, but basically ignoring Maya, like in Apollo Justice, is unfair to the original games and the fans. Doesn't such a major character to Phoenix deserve to have at least a tiny cameo or an actual explanation in the game as to why she isn't there? The end of Phoenix Wright 3 never said she'd be too busy being the crane master to bother ever seeing Phoenix again. In fact, it said exactly the opposite. She would continue to be the assistant manager and crane master. Uh, and she goes on, uh, however, the interviews with the Ace Attorney 5 uh, writer-producer sure don't look promising. Uh, this is a quote from the interview, uh, one of the questions. Instead of Maya Fey, Phoenix is assisted in the game by a new girl. What happened to Maya? And the response was, well, she might be back at her home village for more training. This new girl is certainly a key part of the story, but designing her was a pretty rough process. This doesn't sound like an official backstory. Might sounds more like, we can't be bothered. She's just not here, you know, like in Apollo Justice. A bit of fan input might persuade them to reference Maya rather than some obscure minor character no one actually cares about. Otherwise, they'll probably just assume that no one will miss her now, that we don't need her channeling game mechanic anymore. So that's why this was created, for all the people who do want Maya to be seen or at least referenced properly in Ace Attorney 5. It's more than worth a try. Thanks for your time. Maya Faye. And, uh, Shouldn't petition... Maya Faye know where she is? <laughs> Um, so anyway, the petition, if anyone's interested, is at tinyurl.com slash maya in gs5. I'll also put and, that in the uh, the show notes. So Yeah. we were, I was emailing back and forth with her for a little bit about uh, the reasons for this, and um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I kind of I, I agree with her. It does uh, very much seem like they're just ignoring uh, much of the canon and story that they established with the original trilogy, um, I guess, to try to draw in new uh, fans and not alienate them by expecting them to know something that already has happened in the game. Um, but I think it's extremely disrespectful to the original story, to the people who fell in love with the original story, to just 
be so dismissive of such a major character. If I can be the one guy everybody's going to hate for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Go right ahead. I never really cared much for Maya Faye. I don't <laughs> no, I dislike her. I, <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> dislike her, but I felt like far too much time was dedicated to her throughout the story. And I've I've only watched the videos that Michael's put up of the first three Ace Attorney games. So that's the extent of my involvement with any of this, aside from anything else anybody's mentioned. But I always felt like it was – well, not always, but frequently felt like it was Maya, 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 and she's fun enough, but she really does feel like a more of a side character to me who is very well at home in the pantheon of people like Emma, Ema, Sky, um, or anybody else who would be assisting Phoenix on a case. I was actually very surprised that she took such a large role, and I think in part because Mia was not present – in, in as people are normally present uh, throughout the series, and so she sort of had to do double duty for that, and I understand that bit. But I am very okay with there being a different character and do not have the the fanboy crush or the nostalgia, dedication, devotion to the character that a lot of other people do. So I, as a total outsider, am cool with that. Well, I, I think well, there's a difference between they're having a new Paul, assistant. Paul, Nathaniel, they're disrespecting Paul. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I, th I think there's a difference between having a new assistant, which uh, I don't necessarily have a problem with, and just completely ignoring where this character is at this point. Like, yeah. my, my, big, my big problem with Apollo Justice, uh, as we've talked about before, is that Phoenix has all of these completely horrible things happen to him, and none of his friends are there to do anything about it. Like, the entire trilogy was all about, you know, friendship. And then the friends are, they're all gone. He completely lost his support structure. Everyone completely abandoned him. So um, I, I kind of see this as an extension of that. Them well, just... he did hit the grape juice pretty hard. <laughs> I was going to say is uh, I, I'm not really into Phoenix, right? I've watched a few of the videos, and I thought it was relatively entertaining, but I've never really you know, gotten into it myself. But I can see that, like, as far as I can tell, she's just not there. It's not like, oh, well, you know, in the last game she left at the end and, like, something happened. And in this game it's explained that she never came back. It's more just like, she's not there. You know, just <laughs> surprise. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think that's that's what my problem is. Yeah, 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 I don't that's understand what I'm, why she isn't there. That's yeah. what I'm saying is, like, oh, where's, is where's Nathaniel disrespectful was saying? To Paul. See, you, it is I'm disrespectful sorry, to me personally. Paul. I mean, like, I can agree with what Nathaniel was saying. Is like, it's one thing mm -hmm. to, like, uh, it would be acceptable if they just changed to, like, a new character but had an explanation for why the old one left. But there was no explanation. It's just that, surprise, she's not here. Yeah. So I, I think that's why people are upset about this in particular. I mean, my, my opinion is certainly being colored by the fact that I think Phoenix and Maya belong together forever. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I just think... Yeah, like I said, I think it's just disrespectful to the series and to people who are invested in the series. Yeah, and I feel the same way about it as Nathaniel. Whenever, when I only played the first one, but when I played through it, I felt like, yeah, yeah, Maya, she's cute enough, I guess. <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't really get into the story, the uh, the character too much. But I didn't hate her; she was okay. It's just strange that she would drop off the face of the earth. I, I don't know why they wouldn't at least say, oh, she moved to Venezuela <laughs> now. <laughs> There's this new one. I mean, if they had some, they, they said that she's definitely not going to be in it at all, or she's just not going to be the side. No, no, they 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 haven't said it yet. It was just the um when the producer was interviewed, he was extremely dismissive, like, oh yeah, whatever, she's she's off channeling. But this new character is really cool. Well, I mean what? that that's a producer. That's the producer's job. So you know, take it with a grain of salt. Okay. There's there's actually two things that I'm I'm thinking about here. Uh, one of them. Maybe giving more credit to the designers than I should. Again, not knowing the situation, but at least the possibility exists that they're really downplaying Maya's role because uh, she's not here because she's been kidnapped again. And that's <laughs> one of the main plot points that they don't want to ruin. <laughs> or they have something big planned. Or, goodness, there could be a greater story arc that involves Apollo Justice and Ace Attorney 5 and some future undisclosed game that will pull all of these elements together and then it will be explained why none of this seemed to be connecting to the earlier series. I am and not Paul's counting... head will explode. Yeah, I know. I am oh, not I counting would... <laughs> on that, but I am still not discounting the possibility that there might be something that we're not seeing because we haven't played the completed game yet and we're just going off of some interviews. I would, I would... 
I would love to be able to give them that much credit. <laughs> yeah, I, and again, I'm, I realize that that yeah. is a lot of credit to be giving, but a possibility because I love possibilities. Yeah. No, I mean, they, they, I mean they, they certainly haven't come out and said uh, that she is not in the game, that she has been stricken from canon. She will never be mentioned mm-hmm. again. Uh, but I think the the way that uh, Apollo Justice dealt with the different characters from the original trilogy kind of points to a future where, you know, whatever happened in the game that came out before this game doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what's happening in this game that you're playing and, right and now. And the other thing I'm wondering about, this is still Capcom who's doing it, right? Yes. So I'm looking at uh, something more familiar to me, the Mega Man series, and how... <gasps> Yeah, and how we've got <laughs> Mega Man 4, and we've got Dr. Cossack and Kalinka, who are never heard from again, and then we've got no, Mega Man... No, 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 they, oh, they no, no. Dr. Dr. Franzen. Franzen. What's that? Dr. Franzen? No, uh, Michael was saying something that I missed. Didn't, didn't they, Dr. They, Cossack they technically Dr. come back Cossack in Mega Man 5? Other Mega Man games. Um, they had him in one of the Japan-only releases that was more like board game. He's been <laughs> in the manga. He was in the instruction manual to Mega Man 5. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was referenced. For any of the mainstream games that people are actually playing, there was never any reference again to him or his daughter. And then you've got Mega Man 7, where there's this great climax at the end where a robot is not supposed, spoiler, not supposed to break the first rule of robotics and kill another human. And he's just about to shoot Dr. Wily in anger because he's been such a bad guy. And then Dr. Wily teleports out and then Mega Man storms off and then Mega Man 8 happens and then it's all happy rainbows and sunshine books. And we've completely forgotten about that character development. And then we introduce this new character named Duo, who's from outer space! And then we never hear from him. <laughs> well, we don't talk about it. Who cares about I, the plot? Space! space. I, I, have so, I have so much less confidence in the face of 35 now. <laughs> so that's the other possibility on the table. Is that just... So Maya's in space? Oh, 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 and he has reference to Mega Man ZX. Uh, I've played ZX, but I've only played it once, and I know I missed some of the optional stuff, so it's possible? Might because have missed that. they have um, this Sage Trinity that are, like, the bad guys, and they are Master Albert, Master Thomas, and Master Mikhail. Uh, you sure you're not thinking of ZX Advent, which I haven't played yet? ZX Advent, then, probably. Oh, uh, yeah, I haven't played that one yet. Yeah. Video games. Can't out Mega Man the Mega Man guy. That's just not cool. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about Nathaniel here. He actually liked Mega Man PC. <laughs> it's a good enough game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Paul, though. They'll probably just take away Phoenix's slide and charge shot. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can play as Apollo Justice and have those. Oh, like, well, take twice as, as long as he gets to keep his up. robot dog. <laughs> what about the bird? Beat? We can Beat. Bird. Yes. What about Mega Girl? I'm so I'm so I'm just so sad now. Are you? Everyone has proved conclusively that Maya is not going to be in the next game. Oh, no, there's still there's still the petition. <laughs> yes, uh, the petition once again. Tinyurl.com/slash Maya in GS5. Uh, I think it had you know like several hundred signatures, and really? as we all know, online petitions uh, have 100 percent really success rate. Thing. So. An online petition to get Maya like mentioned in the next <laughs> Like that's I, I love the wording of that. Like they they they've already given up hope that the that she will you know play a major part in it. They just want like some random side dialogue. That's all. <laughs> Something that says at the beginning. Well, Maya moved to Canada, so <laughs> I have to go back to my home planet. <laughs> yeah. <Bye forever. laughs> Actually, uh. We've been recording for about two hours here. Uh, is it about is it about time to wrap things up? Yes. Yes. yes okay. Uh, do we do we have an actual internet website, Paul? We do. We have an actual internet website. It's www.gamecola.net. Check it out. We have stuff there. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter. We're at GameCola. Find us on Facebook. Just search for GameCola. If you subscribe, like, whatever to either of those, you'll get an update whenever we post a delightful new review, video, podcast, whatever. Um, you can also, if you're not listening to this on iTunes, you, you can subscribe to us on iTunes. Rate us very highly if you like the podcast. If you don't, mm. we don't exist on iTunes then. <laughs> if if they don't like it, then what is iTunes? What is this iTunes? Yeah. iTunes. Yes. Um, oh no, I've been completely derailed. Oh no, oh, no I'm YouTube, sorry. YouTube, YouTube. I'm bad at this. It's fine. YouTube. Oh my god, I skipped YouTube. Oh, no, you were getting that. 
No, no, oh, no, I, I actually literally skipped over it. Oh, God. GC.net with the word dot and the word net. <laughs> you can also email us, and we'll make fun of your grammar. Uh, email podcast at gamecola.net. We'll especially uh, make and... sure to make fun of your grammar if you are a piece of punctuation. And finally, if you'd like to join the podcast like poor unfortunate Joe here did today, uh, email podcast at gamecola.net with your Skype address because that seems to be the easiest way to do it. And then just leave Skype on all the time, and whenever Jetty's on, just poke him and say, hey, are you doing a podcast? Uh, so, that was uh, podcast number 55. I guess that's the end. Uh, thank you, Joe, for showing up. It was a pleasure. Thank you to everyone else for being here. Oh, thank you, Jetty. Yeah. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Run it to the ground! Hey, little girl. Did you want to know a secret? Because I know one, and it is so good to hear it. You want to know what it shows? All right, I'll tell you what it shows. I know how to count all the way to 55. And I will tell you how to do it faster than you can say poop de poop de pints. You ready to hear it, baby? All right. Schwan. Two. Two and a half. Seven. Fourteen teen. Twenty one. Twenty seven half. Twenty seven thirty seven. What you say?